Hi there, and let's get to it. So far, we've been looking at serial nodes. These are nodes that appear side by side in the workflow of the node editor. But there's some limitations to working this way. Primarily, it's that every time you make a change to the way your footage looks, and you want to make further changes without affecting the current node, you're going to be feeding this RGB information, which means that the new changes that you're making will be applied to the newly corrected node. And that's a fairly destructive process. If you, for example, wipe out all the colors in the first node, and then you decide to further tweak a color or a channel in the second node, the amount of impact you will have in it will be limited by this first node. Ideally, in this case, we'd want to feed the original source input data into the second node in order to grab a clean key. And that's where parallel and layer mixer nodes come in. They allow you to overlap adjustments from several serial nodes and then output a single RGB signal. So let's take a look at a graphical representation of how nodes interact when combined in a parallel node. I'm going to begin by creating a serial node first, and then I'm going to either right-click to add a new node, so I've got parallel and layer options, or I can click on the nodes menu and say add parallel node or layer node. I prefer to use shortcuts whenever possible, so that's Alt-P and Alt-L. When I click Alt-P, I'm going to see two things appear, and that is the parallel node here, which is now receiving RGB data from two serial nodes. So now I can go into the top node and drop down an ellipse, go into my channels, and maybe introduce a color. I'm then going to copy this ellipse, go into my next node, and paste it. And then I can drag it down and color it with a different channel. To add another serial node to this structure, I can right-click on my parallel node and say Add One Input. I now have the option to link another serial node into this. So I can select my first node, Alt-S to generate a new serial, uh, but it does assume that I want to feed this RGB data into the second node. So I'm going to click on the link and backspace to delete it, and then reconstruct the correct workflow by sending the RGB output to node 2 and then making sure that number 5 is connected to that third RGB input on the parallel node. And for this last one, I'm also going to paste the ellipse and drop it down in the bottom right and introduce the blue channel. So this is a very good representation of how parallel mixing works. The order of the nodes doesn't matter too much. Uh, you could break these links and reconnect them and you won't see a difference. So that's all there is to it. The concept is that we're trying to read the information of the original image, be able to make changes to the nodes on the same step, and then reintegrate them and output them as a single signal. After that, I can continue to make more serial nodes and continue my grading work. Now, what the layer mixer node does is very similar, but the blending works very differently. Because the way that it's constructed is identical, you can very easily switch from parallel to layer mixer mode by right-clicking and saying morph into layer mixer node. When I select this, immediately the interaction between these three changes. Uh, so instead of being blended evenly into each other, they are now superimposed on one another. This is more reminiscent of a layer-based system, like Photoshop or After Effects, where the order in which your elements are laid out impacts the final result. Likewise, the order of the nodes matters, except it's in reverse. The layer that's being fed into the first input will be at the bottom, and the layer that's last in the input will be at the top. Their position on the node editor itself doesn't matter. In fact, I could break up the links between the bottom and the top nodes, and then reconnect them by crisscrossing. And this time, because the blue circle is entering at the top input, it's now appearing at the bottom of my composition and the red at the top. So more correctly, I would demonstrate it like this. Another thing that's different about the layer mixer is that it gives you the ability to select a composite mode for your layers. So just like inside of the inspector of the edit page, I can choose to add, subtract, screen, overlay, etc. Keep in mind that the bottom most layer is not affected by the blending modes. So in this case, that's the blue circle. You can almost think of it like a backplate that remains unchanged while everything else is blended on top of it. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.